So welcome back, and we are in the house this time, uh, to begin with. Um, the Britannia is still in the workshop, so I thought I'd use the opportunity to update the bit of track that it's sitting on. So if we have a look at what we've got at the moment, it was just a piece of dual gauge track which I had redundant in the garden um, from buying stuff for the, the garden railway. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, the board that it's on, I'm going to use some wooden trim to go around the outside to create an edge. Um, and instead of that rail, I've been 3D printing some fairly nice looking scale rail. So that can be glued down or nailed down or however I decide to stick it that can be stuck down and then we can ballast it as well uh, I have had one slight issue with the track in that one of the pieces that I printed has been attacked by a dog who is right here by the way here she is she's getting big now um, but yes, so she got hold of one of my bits of track and that will now be reprinted. I think it's finished on the printer now, but it's still on there. Uh, I just need to put the edging around, glue the track down, and then I'm going to do some painting. So, having printed all of the sections of track that I need, <clears throat> I've come over a little bit unwell. Um, but while I'm unwell, I can sit at the dining table and paint, paint the sections of track. I'm doing it in a few different stages. The first stage, I don't know how well you can see, I'm print, painting the sleepers not being particularly careful to not get it on the rails or anything like that. I'm doing a couple of panels at a time to each stage. Uh, the next stage I am painting the rails a rust colour. Then I'm painting the chairs, which start to look a lot better as well. And finally, I have got some metallic paint. I'm going to paint a strip across the top of the rail head as if it's been polished by the loco going over it. So, that's where I'm at. I haven't done that last silver yet. I'm still working on each of the other bits. This is the last one to paint the sleepers on. And I suppose this is a case of when model engineering meets modeling. <clears throat> They're quite well designed and drawn panels of track. I really do like them. Uh, and all I'm doing, I've got four different colours of brown mixed up. I'm sort of randomly doing a little bit of each colour. Uh, one colour is my main base colour. And then I've got a lighter... Oh, I need to top up that one. Uh, then I've got a lighter brown as well, which I can mix together. A slightly more reddy brown. Not forgetting to get the sides as well. And there is a darker one as well that I'd sort of go over the top with. And then that looks reasonably realistic. And because I'm mixing them all up, as I go sort of mixing it on the, the rail, on the sleeper, I don't end up with a uniform colour that's exactly the same across every sleeper. It's pretty much the same, but it varies a little bit, as wood does. And it even varies across each sleeper as well. So, that's the idea. Um, I'll come back to you with a picture of all four. I'll, I'll put a photo up of one of each stage and then 
<coughs> we'll, we'll have a look at it and, and get it onto the board and then, and then do some ballasting as well. So, I will be back. So we were, while I was painting all of the bits, which has taken a few days, I've also put some wooden trim around the plywood base, which I already had in the workshop, or on the, on the side in the snug, which the, the old track was sitting on. Um, I've positioned the wood, the, the rails, at the midpoint and then found uh, some off cuts of the wood, which I'm trying to do one handed, which is not easy, which make up the correct spacing. I can then push them all against that to get them in the right place. And then, I haven't brought it through here yet. I was having a little look in the workshop and I had some no more nails. So I decided to use this to just stick each of the track sections down um, and then I can start looking at some ballast afterwards. So let's get this done first and then we can look at that after. Or, and I might, in between doing this and the ballast, paint the sides of the wood. I was going to varnish it, but in that room that it's going in, everything's different shades of grey. So I'm going to paint it a matching shade of grey to go with the woodwork that's in there anyway, so it suits the room a bit more. But I'll get this stuck down first, then that can go hard. And hopefully, before long, we can have the engine back on the track. Now I've done one, that shouldn't move too easily. And it will move, but not too easily. I can move the others out of the way and glue the rest. I'm not putting a massive amount down there. It's not going some. It's not going to be something which is likely to get shunted about and buffed, knocked about too much, especially once the ballast is in there as well and glued in, that will hold it all together. So, I'll get on with this, and I'll see you when I get to the next stage. So I've just painted the outside edge grey, and gone round the inside a little bit as well. So once the ballast goes in, that'll hide the inside edge a bit, but just in case some of it was still showing. But yes, that is now ready for ballast, which I hope to get hold of some after work tomorrow. Um, at which point I'll mix up a PVA mix and put it in, but I'll show you that when I'm doing it. So, we'll come back to this shortly. It's time to ballast. I've got some PVA glue, a bucket to mix the glue in, and water it down a little bit. And I have been and bought a bag of cat litter. Now I think you'll agree, I hope you'll agree, and I forget who suggested this to me, but that is pretty convincing as ballast. Now for me, the only thing that makes it not too convincing is it's too clean. So, I've been to my locos, to the coal bunkers, and I have uh, sifted out some of the coal dust and small lumps um, that I can mix in with it. So I can mix some in, so there's a bit of contrast and a bit of uh, variation in the colour. And then I can also save some of the dust to sprinkle more between the tracks, so it looks dirtier between the tracks. So I'm going to give that a go and hope it looks okay. 
I'll be back very shortly. I realise you probably can't see much from there, so I've decided to change the time lapse, get you a little bit closer. It is taking a while, a bit fiddly, but it will look good, I hope. Let's see. Now, I hope that time lapse wasn't too boring. I don't know how long it's going to last at the moment, uh, but I didn't do that much of it on camera there. <coughs> I'll be doing a lot of it off camera once I finish talking to you now. But as you can see, I'm not being particularly fancy and um, accurate with what I'm doing. I'm just slapping it in, poking it about making sure I cover the wood, the, the wood of the baseboard, but beyond that, if it's a bit higher in places, it doesn't matter. If it's a bit low in places, if it's going over the sleepers a little bit, doesn't really matter. I'm trying not to make it flat. I'm trying to leave texture there. But I don't know if it's because the cat litter absorbs the water a bit and the glue um, but the, it didn't seem to go as far as I was expecting when I put the cat litter in um, it's a little bit drier than I was expecting hopefully that'll be okay though hopefully it will stick if it doesn't I'll be doing it again um, yeah, I've still got half a bag of cat litter uh, at least and I've still got more than half a, a three-quarters of a bottle of PVA so if I have gone wrong I can easily increase my ratios a bit so I'll get on with this and I will come back to you probably when it's dark and I've finished so I'll see you shortly as I suspected, it's getting dark and you can't really see what I've done. So, I will take a look at that, see what I can do with flash and whatever, and then leave it to dry and we'll deal with it in the morning. So, I must go and catch the dog because my daughter just arrived home and left the gate open. So, I'll be back in a minute. So, I've brought it in because it was too dark outside. That is looking a lot better. So when it's dried properly tomorrow, I will get rid of the loose bits and see how it looks then. So it has occurred to me that I don't really need to wait for it to dry to brush the loose off because the loose can just stay there until one day it does move outside anyway. So I've put it back in the right place and hopefully we can get the engine back in as soon as possible because I think my wife has been missing it in the <laughs> I don't know if you heard that she said absolutely not but I think she has been secretly missing having it back in the room so we can get that back soon and it will look lovely sitting on its bit of track so here we are the engine has just been put back on the track or on the track for the first time and it looks a lot better an added bonus of this being a little bit shorter than the old one is I now don't need to put any packing underneath the frame when it rolls across. So, excellent. That is now done. So there we go. The engine is back in the house. I will say that since the last time I ran anything, I think, I got hold of a notebook, which so I got hold of. It was kicking around the house where I had um, brought it home from a... An exhibition at work <clears throat> and one for each page I have written a list of little jobs on each engine for example that was the Brit the, the Britannia 
It's all the little jobs that crop up that I think, oh yeah, I'll deal with that at some point, and then forget about. So I thought, right, I'm going to start writing these down. And so far, I have started ticking things off. So the Britannia, I had the piston gland was leaking last time out. The right hand injector water pipe broke off as I was trying to sort out the injector. Suddenly the injector started working once it had uh, no air getting into it. But I had to sort that out. I did a temporary fix out the track. And I've done a permanent fix in the workshop and the springing. I've uh, crossed all them off. There's other things on there like the little little big end, sorry, little end, left hand side is worn, could do with rebushing, and the cupping rods want rebushing. But that's all for the future. Uh, for now, I'm happy with it and I can start working through the jobs on the other engines. So, thanks for watching and I will be back shortly. As for now, I've got a cup of tea coming. So, thanks very much and I will see you soon. Take care.